Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video we'll be taking a look at Aerocool's Cylon 700, a semi-modular power supply with 80 plus rating that costs less than £40 here in the UK. Incredible. So this is the Aerocool Cylon 700 watt semi-modular power supply with a 80 plus white label rating. Now the rating system on power supplies is very much a uh, yeah, quite a confusing thing. Obviously for those of you that are in America using either 110 or 115 volts and there are those of us that are in the United Kingdom and also the European Union which are on the kind of 230 or 235 volt spectrum the ratings are different between the two. So effectively if you kind of look at it in a, a chart format from the 80 plus site which actually I will link to and I'll probably put on the screen now you can see some of the comparisons, but essentially a 80 plus white unit in the UK is roughly the same or similar to that of an 80 plus bronze unit in the United States uh, due to the inefficiencies of the power conversions, etc, etc, etc. Anyway, long story short, this is actually not a bad power supply considering its diminutive price and uh, the fact that it's readily available on Amazon pretty much all year round, although not necessarily at this special price. Normally this retails in around the region of about £55, but for some bizarre reason at the moment on Amazon, all of the Aerocool Cylon power supplies are reduced to crazy limits. And it, I don't understand why. They're actually pretty decent, and for those of you that are regulars to the channel will know that I've used quite a few of these in builds, and most of them are still going strong. And in fact, actually I think the PC behind me has possibly got one in, and I know for sure the PC over there has definitely got one in. So we've used quite a few of these over the last maybe year or so, and we've had no issues. Now, they do come with a two-year warranty, which uh, isn't spectacular by any means, but certainly better than some of the power supplies on the market, which come with a puny one-year warranty, and I certainly would not touch those. Also, the caveat of this, it says 700 watts on the box, yeah, take that with a slight pinch of, well, actually take that with a large pinch of salt. The wattage rating is a kind of combined load. Generally, when we're talking about power supplies and their ratings, really what we're interested in is the 12 volt rail because that is the one that does the most work. So when you're looking at the specs, take into consideration what the 12 volt rail is doing. Regardless of the numbers on the box, if it says 700, 800, 600, whatever it may be, the 12 volt rail is pretty much where you need to be looking. And also, obviously, warranty is a really good thing to look at. But don't be put off by the brand is what I'm really trying to say. Yes, certainly, this is roughly the same sort of price as something like Corsair's VS450, which still pretty decent power supply, but 450 is a little bit on the low side. Generally, it's got ketchup and mustard cabling, and it doesn't look particularly nice. So when you get a power supply come along, which has nice flat black cables, has a relatively good wattage, a pretty decent 12 volt rail, and is semi-modular, you really do need to take a second glance. Talking of second glances, let's take a look at the packaging, see what we get inside, uh, go through the contents, cable links, all that kind of stuff. And then essentially it's gonna be down to you guys to make up your own minds. So first of all, with the packaging, as you can see, this is a little bit different with the 700 watt. The other Cylon ranges generally tend to have a kind of bluish logo on here. Some means of kind of differentiating the branding, I guess. As you can see, it says modular on there, although that's a kind of misleading thing. It is actually semi-modular, not modular. And also you've got the 80 plus white label on there. Again, that is more applicable to those of us in the European Union and also United Kingdom. For those of you that are potentially looking at this in our American ranges, then yeah, the labeling may be slightly different. And in fact, actually, if you're an American person and you're purchasing one of these, let us know in the comment section, what has your Cylon 700 got on it? Is it a bronze or is it a white label? I'd be really interested to know. So also it does have active PFC, which is, uh, without getting into it too deep, is basically a technology to kind of smooth out the ripples in the power delivery. It's basically a power factor correction, which uh, I'll try and put some links in the video description to explain what all that is in great detail. On the side of the box, uh, we've got the multilingual kind of highlights, uh, Spanish, German, etc. And the same on the other side, we've got some of the other European languages. Obviously, because this is a white label and it is a 230V power supply or 235V, it's kind of aimed at the Europeans. Moving around onto the back of the box, we've got some more of the kind of highlights, I would say, of the power supply. Obviously it would be, because why would they put negative points? Anyway, let's move on. 
The cabling in itself, as you can see there, is using these nice soft black cables, which we'll get some close-ups of later. Also, it's 85% uh, efficiency. Now, these power supply boxes are quite misleading at some points. Now, I will direct you to the 80 plus certification site and also where this was entered. I think this was actually certified about two years ago in 2019. So again, depending on when you're watching this video, you may find that information slightly out of date, but it will give you information of how well it did at 20% load, 50% load and 100% load. And actually at 20 and 100% load, it's pretty much exactly the same, around about 82% efficiency. And in the middle, around about 50% load is where it actually scored highest. And it actually got over 85%. I think it scored about 87% efficiency, which actually is pretty decent. Again, would effectively in most countries give it a bronze label pretty easily. But again, you can check all that out from the links in the video description. Also, it's got a temperature controlled fan as well, which has a speed rating of anywhere between kind of 600 RPM give or take 10% up to a maximum of 1800 RPM, again, plus or minus 10%, and generally doesn't really kick into the high gear until it gets under a severe load, around about 80% or higher, which again is gonna lead on to what this power supply is actually really intended to be used with, which we'll cover at the very end. Next up is the, uh, the modular or semi-modular section and showing you some of the connections on the back. And at the very bottom, again, it goes into some detail about the different rails. So the three volt, five volt, 12 volt. It does mention on there, the 12 volt rail actually gives out 53 amps on the 12 volt rail, which actually isn't too bad. For a 700 watt power supply, it's uh, pretty lean. But realistically, if you take into consideration, this power supply is really, I would say, if I was gonna put a badge on it myself, really is a 600 watt power supply if I'm being completely honest with you. So when you're actually considering a power supply for your build, if your need for your system is gonna be running about the sort of 450 to 500 watts, then I would definitely consider this. If your requirements for your PC are a little bit higher than that, kind of 500 to 600 watts, this is gonna be pushing it to its edge. And realistically, again, for around right 36 pounds, you're hardly gonna be spending that kind of money on high-end components and go with a power supply like this. This is, aimed at the budget builders market, or for those with slightly lower requirements, lower core counts, or maybe higher core counts, but with a slightly lesser GPU, that kind of thing, this is gonna be absolutely fine for. So looking at the connectivity, we'll go through this in more detail when we get out of the box, but you've got a 20 stroke 24 pin main power connector. You've got a 12 volt four plus four, which is your supplementary power supply connector. And that is on one of those easy connect connections. So you can either use it as a four pin or an eight pin if you wanted to. Also, it comes with two PCI Express graphics card connections, and those are splittable from six to eight pin, and there's two of those on there, both on a single cable. And you've got three Molex connectors on there, and also you've got an additional five SATA connectors. So, actually, pretty decent. So, in the box, we get a safety information notice. There is the power supply itself, which comes in a relatively poor bubble wrap, but does the job, didn't seem to come through damaged. There is a UK three pin kettle lead or PC power lead, a set of four screws to actually mount it into your case. Cable wise, this is the first one. So this is a, actually let's see how long it is. So that one's about a meter long. So yeah, actually pretty, pretty decent size. The actual first connector from the actual six pin is around about 50 centimeters, 52 centimeters. So yeah basically kind of halfway down. So one of those, and this looks to be, I think this is actually gonna be exactly the same. So no, this one's actually got a couple of extra Molex connectors on. So yeah, pretty much about the same length. So about a meter in length. And the first cable starts, yeah, roughly about the same, like 50 centimeters in. So this one has a SATA, followed by another SATA, followed by a Molex, and then another Molex on the end. So actually that's pretty handy. So if you've got a graphics card which needs another connector for some crazy reason, or maybe you need to adapt something, you can put two Molex into one of those adapters. That's not always the best way of doing things, but certainly, uh, yeah, needs must, and it's nice to have them rather than not. Last up in the uh, the cables box is your graphics card one. Now this is denoted. There is a red connector on the end of there, which goes into the red connection on the power supply. And again, this one is quite short. It does double up on the end, so you've got the two six plus two pin connectors for your PCI Express. And it's quite nice that it's got these flat black cables, so if you are using both of them, you can kind of cable manage it, put a cable tie around there to keep it all nice and flat. And I actually, I actually quite like these cables. 
but like some people have said in other reviews, this is quite a short cable, depending where your graphics card is and also where your power supply is mounted in the system. If you're using something like the Inwin 101C, which we've reviewed before, which you can check out up here, which actually has a power supply mounted in the top section, trying to get this plugged in and then get the cable to the bottom isn't gonna happen. You will need cable extensions for a top mounted PSU. Basement mounted ones, not gonna be so much of a problem. Again, I've used these cables in quite a few systems and it's absolutely fine. Just to give you an idea of the length of this one, so from the actual connector itself to the first connection is just slightly under 49 centimeters. So that's about 19 inches. And then between the two connectors themselves, so if you're just using one, then that is gonna be approximately about 18 centimeters. So yeah, it's not a particularly long cable, but again, the money you're saving on this, and if you're maybe putting this into a system to flip or to sell on, then maybe you can actually spend a little bit of extra money, maybe 14 pounds on a set of cable extensions, just to make it look really nice. So let's take a look at the actual power supply itself. And actually, it's, it's actually quite weighty. I wasn't expecting that. Quite often you find with these cheaper power supplies, the reason why they're cheap is because they cheap out on some of the components inside. So the heat sinks, like that kind of thing, are actually quite small. And actually looking inside as well, I can see there's actually some pretty decent sized heat sinks in there. So we shouldn't be having too many problems there. On the back, got some nice hexagonal mesh, which is always nice to see, and is pretty much the standard these days. You've got a nice rocker switch on there for on or off. There's no switch on here to change between 110 or 230 volts. This is purely for the 230, 235 watt countries, that kind of thing. Yeah, pretty much uh, usual size as well. So we quickly measure it. So we are looking at a depth of 14 centimeters so should fit into pretty much all cases and height wise it's going to be the usual deal so yeah you're looking around about 90 mil so yeah pretty much exactly what you'd expect to see from a standard atx power supply on the bottom got this nice vented section i actually quite like the look of this it's a little bit different rather than having one of those kind of chrome meshes stuck on or whatever quite nice and you've got the aero cool logo in the middle which comes with a little piece of plastic covering it which uh is always actually quite difficult to get off and I think that's why a lot of these actually stay on in the case. Anyway, we'll leave that for now. And also inside you've got a 120 mil fan, which again is thermally controlled speed sensor wise. So anywhere between the 700 RPM up to 1800 is the max rated on the box. Generally, these tend to be quite quiet in my personal opinion. Very rarely do you hear it over the rest of the system. Some people have complained that sometimes there's a little bit of a kind of chirping noise from the fan as it kicks in, but because this is a constant fan rather than one that actually goes to sleep or goes into zero fan mode, that generally eliminates the chirping. The chirp is normally when the fan kind of gets its kick of voltage from the system to actually start the fan spinning after that generally is fine, but this shouldn't be a problem with this unit at all. On the sides, you've got the Cylon logo on there and the uh, orange stripe there. On the other side, nothing at all. On the top section, it just basically replicates what was on the box earlier. So I'll uh, give you a close up of that again, giving you the voltages. So looking at 20 amps on the five volt rail, looking at 35 amps on the 12 volt rail, and also 3.5 is 20 amps as well. So the 3.3 volt and also the five volt, exactly the same 20 amps, which gives you the kind of 100 watts. Plus then you get 636 on the 12 volt rail, which bizarrely gives you, uh, yeah, 700 watts. <laughs> They should definitely think about hiring a new mathematician. But like I said before, 700 watts, I would not rate it as that. I would say realistically, if you're buying a power supply, consider this as a kind of a decent-ish 550 or 600 watt power supply. 700 watts is very misleading in my personal opinion. So let's take a look at the back of the unit. So on the back here, we've got the connections. So you've got connections for your additional ports there for supplementary devices, SATA and Molex, etc and you've got your single red connector there, which is for your PCI Express. Only the one connector on this one. So I think they've taken heed of kind of the sensible solution that really you wouldn't be wanting to use a three connector type graphics card or even an SLI configuration in this. Traditionally, a 7 watt power supply, you'd think with SLI, you could probably get away with it, but I think by taking that away from there and not actually supplying any extra cables to connect up more graphics cards, that is a sensible solution in my opinion. Looking at the cabling again, so we've got the usual kind of uh, flat licorice style soft cabling, which is actually particularly easy to cable manage. I really do like this a lot. And you've got the captive cables, which are a kind of semi-modular semi setup. So you've got the 
four pin plus four pin, which is one of those nice sliding connectors which goes together, which actually makes life a little bit easier when you're trying to actually fit one of these in a slightly tighter case, stops them falling apart quite as easily. But again, okay, if you just want to use four pins, you can do, no issues there. Uh, again, relatively decent length on there for those of you that are interested. So we are going to be looking at approximately 52 centimeters. So not a bad length at all there. And the main connection for your 20 stroke 24 pin, again, it's got those nice sliding connectors. So uh, unlikely to come apart when you're actually trying to physically plug it in. Again, all finished in these nice flat black cables, which I really do appreciate. Okay, so that is a look at the connectivity, uh, the connections, the lengths, etc., etc. So, what is my personal opinion? Well, my personal opinion, you probably guessed already, is pretty positive. I actually really like these power supplies. For me, they're very cheap, which, hey, it's Mike's Unboxing. We like to do things where things are cost effective. I wouldn't buy trash. I really wouldn't. And if it was trash, I would definitely tell you. Like I said, I've had a few of these now from Aerocool, and they've all done very, very well. Quite a few of the members of the Discord also in the same kind of situation. A lot from England as well, so a lot of people are buying these and using them in flip builds or even for their main systems. The thing to really consider is what you're using with it, and obviously don't be daft about it. If you're buying a Ryzen 5800X and a RTX 3090, clearly this is not the power supply for you. You do need to be looking a little bit higher up the range for that or a different brand altogether. Certainly, if you're building a system based around relatively modest components, say an RTX 2060 and a Ryzen 5 3600, this is going to suit you down to the ground. It's going to be absolutely fine. Again, do take into consideration the 12 volt rail and what your requirements actually are. If you're not too sure, we'll put some links in the video description as well for the PSU wattage calculator, which is really handy for that sort of thing. We'll give you a really good idea of what you need. But essentially, it is what it is for the cost of about 36 pounds, which is the equivalent pretty much of some of EVGA's and Corsair's power supplies, kind of lowest end entries, do temper your expectations. This isn't gonna be the dual fix all, but certainly if you're building a system, again, moderate components or just a flip system, and you want to have something in there which is relatively good, but not kind of crazy God tier quality and pricing, yeah, definitely worth a look. So we'll put some affiliated links in the video description below so you can check out it for yourself. Uh, the price at the moment, I don't know how long this is gonna last for, so if you are considering it, jump in quickly just to make sure you can get one. But again, there are other options available. There is also a 600 watt, a 500 watt, and I think there's a 400 as well. So if you're really scraping the barrel, then there's a few options to suit most pockets. So I've been Mike, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews now too, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.